even in your sleep sometimes that's haunting you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's yeah. like, but but where when we get to this point of realizing, okay, we have more of this time or more of this energy or even more zest in the day. So would you say that it's a daily prioritizing of where we need to be in that day as far as, okay, maybe taking a moment in the morning and saying, hey, I'm feeling really good, can get a lot done today, mm-hmm. um, or or even saying, hey, I feel really good and it's going to be a selfish day and I'm not going to feel guilty about it. So, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, in regard to the, the more light and the more energy, um, do you feel like it really comes down on an individual and a daily basis rather than, kind of a rigid um pattern or or yeah. you know we have to get this done because i know I, when yeah. i go into those have tos i kind of beat myself up a little bit more right and that's part <laughs> of the you know there's this interesting balance between um this is this is the plan and and we do make plans because um you know we it's often involves other people and so plans are made so that we actually do arrive at the same movie at the same time that we wanted to see together right. um, <laughs> and you know I mean, so we do make plans but we also so there's a necessary flexibility and i would say you're absolutely right it's on a daily basis the thing about the solstice is, is that it puts it in a in a bigger container you know, it's kind of there are these movements throughout the year, and this becomes the time of blooming. If you look at your life and see what is blooming and what is not, this is the other way to do it, kind of retrospectively, it tells you something about the seeds that you planted or didn't, okay. or the seeds that you nourished, uh, watered, you know, or didn't um, okay. during the time coming up to this, because. Um, you may have had a sort of notion of something that you wanted to plant uh, in the in the cycle of the spring, and but either didn't or did, and then forgot to water it, and it's not blooming now. So one of the questions around the solstice, not even just about sort of going forward, is 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 a kind of inventory, just looking at what is blooming in my life, what is full flower in my life. Um, and you know that could be anything. That could be, um, you know, what's what's full flowering is conflict in your family. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know, fun. Just, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> or what's full flowering is, you know, an increased flexibility and ability to discern what will work today for you and what won't. I mean, there's, it, it's infinite the, the possibilities here. But if you want to know kind of what you planted and what you've been nourishing along the way, um, you look at what's in full bloom. And I'm not suggesting that that this is totally in our control. You know, um, I think about my parents right now. My father's Alzheimer's is in full bloom. There's no doubt about it, you know. And that's not in anybody's immediate control. Um, Right. Believe me, I wish it was kind of thing. So... So then it's a, it's a looking at that's some of this is about a reality check. That's the reality right now um in with my father that impacts all of the family. And so um there may have been other seeds I planted that are not getting watered because I need to put energy in this place and that's okay. But it does help to at least acknowledge it to you know <laughs> to not sort of hang on to a, um priorities that maybe there's just there's not enough uh, light and energy for right now because it's got to go somewhere else. And and that's you know I'm sure dealing with your father with full blown Alzheimer's you have to take it on a day in and day out level because you don't know you know where his his consciousness is on that day right. That's right. So yeah. so that's you know on on a lot of levels kind of in in taking yourself out of the emotional pain of of watching that. It's a really powerful lesson in regard to, you know, really appreciating the times we have here that mm-hmm. we can utilize to really, you know, do what our soul's longing or path is. And yeah. and I really like your reality check point because um, reality check is 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 that beautiful thing that when you're really truthful with yourself, you can look at your life and you can say. Wow, I really slack on that. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
you know, and, and okay, because inner dialogue is one of those things that I think either you do it all the time or you're mm-hmm. afraid to do it. You need to learn how to do it comfortably. Yeah. So, you know, that's that's a yeah. really, you know, for, for, for you and I, we probably take it for granted because there's so much inner dialogue that we do with ourselves, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's like we couldn't yeah. imagine somebody who doesn't have inner dialogue. However, they do exist. And yeah. and you know, it's it's almost like that point of getting comfortable with where your thoughts and your ramblings go. Mm-hmm. And you know, even if there is some little, you know, toxic ego aspects of ourselves that come out in our little thoughts and inner dialogue, mm-hmm. it's okay. It's like this Absolutely. is a really good time to look at that. Wouldn't you say this is you know, yeah. like like and, utilizing fact, this. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say is I have a sort of thing I do four times a year on the uh, solstices and equinoxes where um, I look at um, what is actually going on emotionally, mentally, spiritually, sexually um, in my life. What did I miss up? Physically, yeah, that's interesting. I missed that one when I said them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and the reason why I use that structure a little bit is just for that reason. It, it because I can blank out entirely on one that I might not be too keen at looking at. Now, one of the things that's interesting about that process is um there's a kind of goal setting, but not in the sense of of, you know, kind of really uh not necessarily very concretely in the sense of I try to set goals that that go to essence. So, you know, I could say you could have a concrete goal of, you know, I want to double my income. Um, Instead, I would sit in that process and kind of sit with what – what what is that about? What what's the essence of what I think a doubled income, let's say, would give me, or you know, whatever it is, relationship, place you're living, whatever the concrete thing is, and it might be about security. It might be about being able to be more available for my sons or my parents if they're in need. It might be about being um, more able to give something in particular. So, what I try to do is go to the essence of that because. And I love the title of your show, Unlimited Realities. In, oh, in, a, in, in the past, I've talked about this as the infinity of solutions. Right. So I don't set my intent for, um, for the concrete. For I set it for the essence, and I leave the shape of that to the universe because I'm not willing to tie the hands of, of God, the universe, the divine, what, you know, and say, well, right. this is the form it has to come in. <laughs> You know, right. so I pray, I pray for an alleviation of my father's suffering. Uh, I don't ah. know what that would look like. Uh, at a okay. certain point, it was it his suffering was alleviated a bit because the disease speeded up. Ah. Um, because he was at the point of of not being able to function, but still remembering what he had lost. Oh, so he that, actually that's suffered horrible. less, right? So right. Now, I would never have prayed for let the disease, you know speed up exactly um, but in but in fact that was the way that some of the a, a bit of the suffering was alleviated so wow it's about trusting the form um yeah. and allowing that unlimited realities that infinity of solutions to take place by going to the essence of what it's about for you in any given time and it's almost always some form of love is the essence of what it's about Right. Whether it's self-love, whether it's love for another, whether it's love for life itself, whether it's an expression of, of wanting to express more of your love. And I'm using that term in the broadest possible sense. Um, right. So these times of year, you know, and so one of the things that happens is if you do this regularly, and I, of course, being the endless note keeper, you know, write these things down. <laughs> and you look over, you know, the last couple years or something, and you see that um, something keeps coming up um, and you've had an idea. You usually, when something comes up repeatedly, you have a pretty, you have some idea of what that would look like, and you, you know, you'd like it to go there. And if it doesn't, then the question is, like, if it keeps coming up on your list, so to speak, but it's not actually manifesting. One of the questions is, is this true? Is this something that I really long for at the deepest level, or is it an ideal, something I think I should long for, mm. or something? Um, I think is a good. I have. I value. Meant, you know. I think it's a, a valuable thing. But on a on a feeling level for myself, it's not holding a lot of value for me. And that's why I'm not planting or watering those seeds. So again, so it would it, be. 
Go yeah. ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. Well, it's always about gathering information, in a sense. Okay. You know, so if I keep putting down something um, and and it's not happening, a lot of one of the questions to ask is, uh, is there an essence of this that I'm not going to that's deeper? And or maybe this just isn't that important to me. Maybe I don't right. really want to do it at all. Right. You know, and right. I think I should. That's why I keep putting it, you know, I keep thinking, yes, this is the way I want to use my energy. But if I don't, I need to ask myself that question. That's that's so, um, it's, it's, it's personally powerful for me because it's probably about the third time I've heard it stated to me um, three times in the last couple of days. So I'm, mm-hmm. I'm really reflecting on your words mm-hmm. right now. And it's because I do believe in the conflict of our feelings and our intention. And I really, you know, a lot of times we think we want something or we mm-hmm. think we're intending towards a goal. And actually, when we tap into our heart and our feeling center, it's like there's a lot of fear associated with that mm-hmm. supposed intention. Or there's a lot of apprehension because we haven't kind of, you know, excavated the, the crap from the last experience. Like, yeah. you know, and, and, and so there's there's some remnants of stuff hanging on there that we don't really identify with in our head sector when until we drop into our heart and our feeling sector. And yeah. that's, you know, it's like a completely different read. So, you know, that's that's really, I will be reflecting upon that on my little <laughs> drive today. <laughs> Right. Well, and think but, about what happens when, when that's happening is in some ways you're driving with a foot on the gas and a foot on the brake at the same time. One part <laughs> has a foot on the gas and the other has got a foot on the brake. Is it any wonder we get tired? Well, so and, burn an and, engine out. <laughs> and obviously you've, you've been in, in Florida traffic because uh, <laughs> there's so many. So many people that I really have to practice what I preach when I get on the roads because I, I definitely, <laughs> I definitely get my uh, my tests there with Florida driving because um, literally they do drive with a foot on the gas and the brake and it's it, <laughs> it's one of those things like you know dude I'm pretty sure you're kind of paralleling this in your lifetime right too. <laughs> let's let's choose one side of the road or the other. So, right. um, you know, when we're going through these these shifts, okay, we're going through this mm-hmm. this energetic shift right now, and we're going through this this time of coming into summer solstice, and and really, you know, embracing the light. You see a lot of people utilizing the light, both at the beach and outside and mm-hmm. the outdoors, mm-hmm. and and like you said, you have a gorgeous summer up there in Canada, and what can we do? Do you do anything ritualistically? to honor in the solstice like like for me um a lot of times when it comes for for solstice i may do a burning bowl or Mm -hmm. i may have i may have a burning bowl with sage and you know use you know have some crystals around and and there you know so there may be different rituals that i go through in honoring different periods what do you do well, I you know I do a I do a ceremony every day um, where I uh, smudge with cedar and sage and sweet grass and lavender as a kind of cleansing and calling out. Um, I do a sacred pipe ceremony, which is a set of 22 prayers, which is really mostly about coming into alignment. It's kind of naming um, aspects of uh, the seen unseen worlds uh, in an effort to come into alignment with them. Um, oh, and nice. then there's usually a particular intent. So around the solstice, um, some solstices I've had very clear ideas about something that I really want to help bring to fruition, and I bring, I pull that energy in for that particular purpose. And I might do that um, in in the shamanic tradition I work in. Uh, minerals are the holders of energy, so I might do that very specifically around a particular crystal or or stone or you know something like that to hold that energy with that very particular intent of how I want to use that and then and then have that on my altar so that as time goes on I I reconnect to that intention that um what I want to use the energy for um it, I've done some ceremonies in groups around the solstice where um where there is this sort of uh, both a celebration of the light, but also this sense of 
as this changes immediately afterwards, we're setting sail across the growing darkness to the other side of 